This is James Fox with another video tutorial for QuickBooks Pro 2013. In this tutorial, we're going to set up the first sales tax account. Now, if you charge sales tax, this sales tax account is going to be required by QuickBooks and it will be designated as the most common sales tax item. The most common sales tax item means that this will be the sales tax that you charge to a customer almost every time you create an invoice. Now the reason why I say almost every time is because you may do business with companies that are exempt from sales tax such as a nonprofit organization or maybe even a government entity. Now before we set up the initial sales tax item, we're going to either confirm or change some of the basic sales tax parameters. And we're going to do that in the sales tax company preferences window that you see here. Now, now I'm going to cancel this window to show you how to open it. So clicking cancel, go to the edit menu, go down to preferences and click preferences. When the preferences window appears, click sales tax in the left pane and then click company preferences. Now this is the dialog box that we're going to use to change the basic sales tax settings. Now the first thing that you must do is click yes to the question of do you charge sales tax? If no is selected, then everything is going to be grayed out and you won't be able to change anything. So make sure yes is selected. Now here is QuickBooks default most common sales tax item. It's called out of state. Now this sales tax item is listed in the item list and it is designated as the most common sales tax item which means that you're going to use it the most. I'm going to change some information regarding this sales tax item in a few moments so we will come back to this. Now if you take a look in the assign sales tax code section you're going to see taxable item code and non-taxable item code and what that means is when you create an invoice you have the option of designating a line item as taxable or non-taxable. For example, Joe's Landscaping sells roses. When I enter in a line item for roses, I can designate if I'm going to charge sales tax or not. And that will depend on the kind of customer that I'm dealing with. If I'm dealing with a customer that is exempt from sales tax, then I'm going to choose the non-taxable item code. If that customer has to pay sales tax, then I'm going to choose the taxable item code. Now if you don't like the words tax or non as your item codes, you can add a new item code by clicking the drop down arrow and selecting add new. And here's where you're going to enter a new sales tax code. It's a minimum of three characters and you can type in whatever you want. I'm not going to create one at this moment, but this is where you go to create a new sales tax item code and they can only be designated as either non-taxable or taxable. Those are the only options. So for now, the codes tax and non are good enough. Now let's take a look at the section called when do you owe sales tax. Do you owe sales tax as of the invoice date or do you owe sales tax upon receipt of the payment? This is going to be determined by which type of accounting your company partakes in. Does your company use accrual basis accounting or cash basis accounting? You must find out which type of accounting your company use and then make the selection accordingly. Now when do you pay sales tax? Now it's important that you contact the appropriate tax agency and find out when do they want you to send in the sales tax. Is it on a monthly, quarterly, or annual basis? Now going back to the most common sales tax item. As I said previously, this item is listed in the item list and I'm going to go to the item list to change the information for this sales tax item. Now to save the information, click OK. And I'm going to the item list to change the information for that out of state sales tax item. So go to the list menu, click on item list, and here is the out of state sales tax item. To edit the information, you can either double click it or you can right click and then select edit item. Now the first thing I'm going to address is the sales tax name. QuickBooks default sales tax name is called out of state. I'm going to change this to local sales tax because most companies do business locally. 
So change it to local sales tax. And you can write a description if you choose to. Now it's important that you contact the tax agency to find out the corresponding tax rate in that area. If it's 5%, just enter in the number 5. If it's 3.75, just type in 3.75. I'm going to use the tax rate of 4.75 and then press the tab key on my keyboard. Now the tax agency is the government entity that you're collecting taxes for. For example, if Joe's Landscaping was located in Beverly Hills, California, then we'd be collecting taxes on behalf of Los Angeles County. And that is the example tax agency that I'm going to use. So to enter in the tax agency's information, click the drop down arrow and then select Add New. And entering in the tax agency's information is just like entering in the information for a new vendor. Now enter in the name of the tax agency and I'm going to use Los Angeles County Department of Revenue. And further down where it says build from, that's where you're going to enter in the address for the tax agency. Now if you have more information for the tax agency such as the phone number, email address, or fax number, you can enter that in in the appropriate fields. Once you've done that, click OK to save it. And now all of my fields are complete. I've got the tax name, description, tax rate, and the tax agency to which I must send in the taxes that I collect on their behalf. Now I'm going to create a sample invoice so that you can see how this sales tax item is used. So click OK to save everything. And on the QuickBooks home page, click Create Invoices. I'm going to enter a sample customer. And I'm going to use the Red Roses item. Now if you take a look on the far right of the invoice, you'll see the column called Tax. And beneath that, you'll see the Sales Tax Item Code Tax. This is the item code that we spoke of earlier, where you can choose whether or not an item is taxable or non-taxable. If I were dealing with a nonprofit organization, I'd change this to non-taxable and they won't be charged any sales tax. But we're going to assume that this is a taxable customer, so change the item code to taxable sales. And if you look towards the bottom of the invoice, you'll see the sales tax item that I created, which is local sales tax, and the sales tax rate of 4.75%. Now if you multiply $50, times 4.75 percent you'll get two dollars and 38 cents. If sales tax were due today I would send in two dollars and 38 cents to Los Angeles County Department of Revenue because I'm collecting taxes on their behalf. Now here's one quick note if you're on the website you can use the search field to search for more topics that you're interested in learning about because there are a lot of topics on the website. Or if you want, you can also scroll through the chapters and look at each topic and choose which one you want to learn about that way. But it'll be more efficient if you were to use the search box. And that's how you create the default sales tax item. If you have any questions, please send me an email. Once again, my name is James Fox, and I'll see you next time.